Do you own anything valuable or have valuables? Where do you keep them? Do you put them in a safe or do you keep them in a safe deposit box at the bank? We keep our marriage certificate and our children's birth certificates in a vault that can be locked and is not crushable and it's supposedly fireproof to protect that and some other sentimental uh, valuables that we have. But our lifestyles are modest and there really isn't a lot of valuables to worry about. In today's passage, the Apostle Paul talks about a treasure that he has and where it is kept. What is this treasure that Paul says he and the Corinthian church share? The light that God shone in our hearts, quote, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ, unquote. <laughs> That's sort of an odd choice of words, but I get it. It's a treasure to experience something of God's glory by way of our relationship to God in Jesus Christ. But where this passage gets really unusual is where this treasure is kept. And it isn't a fireproof safe or even a safe deposit box. The treasure is kept in us. <laughs> you might say that's not so unusual. After all, we're made in the image of God. The psalmist celebrates how God makes a human and says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And even though we're but human and God is exalted, glorious, holy, Lord of all, in another Psalm we read, though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. All of this is true and to be celebrated. But when Paul talks about where our treasure is hidden, he refers to us as jars of clay. If you think about the, an unglazed clay jar, if you put it in a hydraulic press, it's just going to crumble. If you need a jar of clay to tell you which direction to go, it's not going to help you. You can't. <laughs> You're going to stay lost. If you whack a clay jar, it will shatter. Paul says that being human is like that. Life can throw things our way that will confuse us and break us. Ah, but the treasure within us is what saves us. When we're pressed, we're not crushed. When we're perplexed, we don't despair. Even if we are persecuted, the light is still in us. We're not abandoned. Even when life deals us its cruelest blows, we're not destroyed. Why? Because we no longer rely on our own resources. That light in us is what Paul calls God's all-surpassing power. Imagine you're watching the javelin throw at the Paris Olympic Games. The world's best athletes are showing off their prowess in their sport. The best of the best makes a throw. Everyone is sure will win them the gold medal. But then in walks Supergirl and she grabs the javelin and she throws it and it flies over the competition area, over the tracks around the competition area, over the stands and disappears into the clouds. The word translated all surpassing here is the Greek word hyperbole, and it simply means literally to throw beyond. It's a metaphor for superiority, excellence, or preeminence. The world messed up human nature, ours and other people's. The world and the devil himself cannot crush us, make us despair, destroy us, or cause us to be abandoned by God. We may be jars of clay, but within us is the light of the world with all of God's all-surpassing, incomparable power. Paul says in a letter to another church, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned.
struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure that his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain. 